So where are we now regarding ASU strike federal government's decision? Well, let's join the president of ASU, Professor Abiodun Oguyemi, who joins us from our Buddha studio this morning. Well, thank you for joining us on Sunrise Daily. Thank you very much for inviting me. Good morning. Good morning to you. Now, I mean, this strike has been on for about eight months. That's almost an academic year gone, just like that. And, and I know you've had several meetings with the federal government. Now, listening to uh, the Minister of Labor and Employment saying that, well, your union is going to receive the last irreducible offer from the government. Now, that was last week. This is Monday. And a lot of Nigerians would like to know, have you received that? If we could start off with that. Well, as of this morning, we have not received from government. We are still expecting that they will give their irreducible uh, offer, as uh, the minister promised. Right. Now, you, you laid out your, your demands at the start of this, this strike around March, and some of them date back as far as 2009 with previous administration. So if we could just go through them one by one, just so we know how much progress we have made so far. Now, this one concerns funds for revitalization of public universities. Now, we understand that ASU is demanding 110 billion naira, and that's based on uh, previous agreements and MOUs. Now, the F FG, that's the federal government, is offering 20 billion naira uh, as a result of what it calls dire economic situation. So regarding that, Nigerians would like to know, you are staying at 110 billion naira. The federal government is saying, well, we have 20 billion naira. Is there a middle ground to this? Well, thank you very much. Uh, what they call uh, demand here has a history, just like you said. Uh, we have found that over the years, each time we had agreement with government, negotiated agreement, government would just focus only on the salary component. The aspects of uh, funding, the aspect of uh, autonomy, and uh, the aspect of conducive environment for learning and working in the universities will not be addressed. So talking specifically about revitalization fund, we had agreement signed in 2009. Then we had 24 federal universities. And the government signed that um, they will give them restoration fund to the tune of 1.5 uh, trillion uh, over a period of uh, five years. But government never did anything until uh, we continue to insist that government should not just stop at talking about salaries. Government should talk about the environment where we work, the environment where our students uh, live, and uh, to make our universities competitive with others in the world. So by 2012, after much persistence and advocacy by our union, government agreed to embark on the needs assessment of all public universities. At the end of the day, about 68 universities were visited. And the report was uh, quite revealing. We visited hostels where students were packed like sardines, as we usually say. Uh, we visited the uh, classrooms and lecture theaters without seats, without uh, electricity facilities. We visited laboratories without chemicals and reagents. And uh, there could not be anything called research in such laboratories because even some laboratories in first generation universities were without running taps. And kerosene stoves were used in place of buzzing bonus. So we found all these things that were documented and the report of needs assessment of the federal government of Nigeria is there for all to see. So when this report came back, uh, when government got this report from the committee, it set up to verify our claims. Government uh, was scandalized because that report was presented to the uh, National Economic Council where all governors were present. And all governors agreed uh, together with the uh, government a federal government that something urgent must be done. At the end of the day, government agreed to massively inject fund to the tune of 1.3 trillion over a period of six years, starting with 2013. So 
Uh, for 2013, government was to release 200 billion, and for the subsequent five years, government was to release 220 billion each year. Unfortunately, it was only for 2013 that government released uh, 200 billion. And uh, that fund was released over a period of five years. By 2017, our you know now reminded government that uh -uh, you promised to uh, refertilize our universities, to address the rot and decay by massively injecting funds into the system. But we have stopped after the first tranche. So we had left uh, five tranches. In 2017, this government signed a memorandum of action with us. And the government promised that well, we will give 20 billion to show a sign of commitment to the memorandum of understanding the previous government signed with you in 2013. And uh, we assure you, as soon as we could uh, activate other sources of funding that we have proposed, we will restore uh, the subsequent, uh, uh, sub subsequent releases. But unfortunately, again, government went to sleep. 2019, we had to come back to remind them. Now, what you promised on revitalization, you have not done. We had, we had done memo. At some point, we set up a seven-man committee or seven-person committee that worked with the Federal Ministry of Finance that came up with suggestions, including these facts we are talking about, including stamp duty, and some other recommendations were brought up. It was a joint committee of our union and government. Right. And when if I could those just come in briefly, were brought up, Professor Gray, uh, in just a moment, I just want so, to clear something out. Uh, so you yes. mentioned that this government has only paid, or at least paid 20 billion naira for the revitalization of universities, public universities in the country. But, and you are asking for at least 110 billion, which, which is where I started from. By the way, thank you for giving that background. But the question now is, what is the minimum that ASU once regarding the revitalization of federal universities or public universities in the country? Is it 110 billion or you're ready to shift ground closer to the federal government's 20 billion? We didn't start, we didn't start with uh, 110 billion. I want to show that we have shifted ground. We asked for one tranche of 220 billion. But when federal government was saying that, uh, well, you have to shift ground, you have to consider situation, we went back to our members. And our members said, well, let government give 50% as a sign of commitment. So each time government says, as well as not shifted ground, we fought them on that because we did start with 110 billion. So if government is saying that uh, for a union that asks for 110 billion as a mark of, um, uh, 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 as, as a way of watering down the demand, because we have halved the one tranche that we said government must start with. Now, government is saying we will give 20 billion out of 110. What percentage is that? So our member said we have worked with 50%. Let government come out and say, well, uh, we know this 20% is not, I mean, 20 billion is not realistic. Prof, what just, will that just do a moment. in a system? Yeah, just, just a moment, Prof. As, uh, as bad as we have now. Yeah, just a moment, Prof. Uh, this 110 billion naira, uh, one tranche that uh, ASU is asking for, for the revitalization of public universities, you talked earlier that at the time that the agreement was signed, it for, was for 24 federal universities. How many universities are these, is this fund meant for? No, we, I, I, didn't say, I didn't say when the memorandum of understanding was signed, it was meant for 24 universities. It was 2009 agreement that specified 24 universities. But by the time the NIST assessment was conducted in 2012, I said about 68 universities were visited. Now we have about uh, 90, 90 universities, public, federal, and state universities, because all of them were visited then. Since that visit, new universities have been created and more are still being created. This is what we have seen. Government will create universities that they are not ready to fund. 
Those 12 universities that were created just, just a moment, uh, prof. under the last administration. Let, let's yeah, let's uh, speed this up. Just, just a moment. Just a moment, Prof. These, you're talking about between 68 and 90 universities now, and these are federal public universities. Am I correct? Federal and state. Federal and state. Federal and state public universities. Okay. Now, that yes. visitation you know, team, those visitation teams that went around, they did include any committee of the Senate or committee of the House of Representatives. What is their take or what is their input in all of these? Uh, well, at uh, every point, those reports were presented. We had uh, representatives from even the Senate. So the, the, we, because when we were talking about this issue in 2012, 2013, uh, then late, uh, late comrade uh, Chuku uh, the I was the chairman of the Senate Committee on Education, and we interacted actively with him. So the committee was in the picture, just as we are doing now. As we are discussing with government now, the chairman of Senate Committee on Tertiary Education uh, and, and Tech Fund has been participating in our meetings. In fact, we have met the Senate president over this matter, and we have presented all the issues before him and, uh, and the leadership of Senate. So there was no the result time of the intervention we of the presented National this Assembly. issue that we didn't bring yeah, the, just, just the a moment, Prof. Yes, what progress has been made since the intervention or the you know interface with the National Assembly on this stalemate that's lasted, as my brother said here, eight months, a full academic year about. Well, I think it is uh, not correct to say it has lasted eight months. Uh, there was a lockdown that uh, also lasted for about five months, and we could not uh, uh, have active engagement. But during that period of lockdown, we called on government to start thinking of how to solve the problem. And we have been calling this matter uh, an emergency situation, just like we had with COVID-19. Uh, it was just because government was not uh, responsive enough. Uh, well, progress, talking about progress, we will say that all we have had so far are promises. And our members are saying they are tired of promises. Because when we signed a memorandum of action in 2017, government went to sleep. We signed another one in 2019, nothing happened a year after. So even these four other issues that we have listed, we are just tracking them. But because we started with revitalization, that's why I said I should give the details about revitalization. All right, when we come to other issues, I will also tell you more about Yes. That. Well, perhaps those other issues are included in this uh, tape you're about to listen to of the Minister of State for Education, Chukwemeka Wajuba, on some of the ways in which the federal government has addressed the issues that ASU has been raising. The five points you just raised, you can look at any each one of them. Uh, visitation panels to universities. The president has signed the visitation panel report. And all the, we've constituted all the panels. Malama Damadamu, the minister of education, has worked at all of them. It's been signed off by on, on the president. We've taken it now to the attorney general for because the law actually requires you to gazette them. So it's being gazetted. That's not a problem. The second, which is visit, um, um needs assessment for universities and, and payment of uh, uh, all the, we have agreed to what it is that government needs to provide. We've made offers of how much money that is available to the government's coffers. You, we, we, are, we didn't just drop from the moon and ASU is not um, uh, some people out of this world. They are here in Nigeria. They know that the limitations of the economy, the Nigeria sells only two point something, about two million barrels of oil a day. A day. And at most at $35. So it's not like that $5 multiplied this will probably give you somewhere in the neighborhood of $700 million. So as far as the federal government is concerned, these issues are getting attention. What's the challenge as far as ASU is concerned? Well, with due respect to the Honorable Minister of State, exactly what he said uh, in that tip, was what they told us in 2017 and 2019. In fact, in the memorandum of action of 2019, government said, well, 
the inauguration of the physician panels, I was just awaiting gazetting. One year after we came back to the same story. I'm talking of February 7, 2019, when we signed the last memorandum of action. So if one, more than one year after, government is still gazetting, how long will it take government to gazette? So that one, as far as our members are concerned, is no longer, uh, is no longer acceptable. What they want to see is inaugurate the panel so that we know that they are ready, the panels are ready uh, to do their job. Uh, talking about uh, dollars and the uh, sale of oil, I, I wonder if Nigerians have ever had government, maybe except uh, uh, in the 70s, government saying that we have enough money to spend on any particular matter. It is what they see as emergency that they give their attention to. It's about priority. If we see education as a priority, we will deploy our, all our resources to address the emergency. We see the situation in which we are as a state of emergency. A state of emergency should be declared in that sector because that is where the future of this country lies. People, the, 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 the president signed a, an executive order in 2018 talking about local content. Local content is about research and development. How can we have research and development in universities without laboratories, without libraries, without functional uh, studios and theaters? That is what we need. It is investment in education that grows any country. It's mm -hmm. like we prefer calling people that will come from uh, uh, Asia, uh, Europe, uh, America, to come, and, to come and develop our country. It never happens anywhere. Because mm -hmm. anybody you bring into this country has interest of their country at the back of their mind. Right. So what we have been saying is that we need our universities to grow this country. We need our universities to innovate and to mm -hmm. develop and one this of the, country. One so other issue you raised. Intervention in university is not a waste. It's an right. investment. Now, one other issue you raised is the earned academic allowance. But just to be clear, when you say that the strike has not been on for up to just less than eight months. And one wonders, was it not on March the 23rd that ASU declared that strike? So that's almost eight months. But talking about the other demand regarding the, uh, the, the earned academic allowances, I know ASU is demanding 30 billion naira for federal universities and the FG is saying, well, we can just pay about 30 billion naira to ASU and three other unions. I know that has also been a tricky issue for ASU. So is ASU, let, planning to concede on that, I mean, think about the other unions and say, well, we realize that we're, we're in the struggle together, so how about we shift ground? What is ASU's thought on that? It is not about uh, ASU versus other unions. We have never operated like that. But it's about what you negotiate with a union. It is not proper for one union to negotiate on behalf of any other union. Because each union in the university uh, system today has uh, its own agreement with federal government. What ASU is asking for is based on the agreement we sign with government. And every claim that ASU makes, the members have data. They have facts and figures. So if we are working from the premise of what has been verified for our members, we think it will be inappropriate to now say, well, uh, let's extrapolate uh, for other groups. They are our uh, comrades, and they are also free to make their demands on government based on their own uh, agreements. It's as simple as that. Well, you also, uh, most of the issues that ASU is raising have to do with funding. Um, there is also the issue of IPs and UTAs, and we, you know, we understand where ASU stands on that one and where the federal government stands. Uh, but uh, what's the latest on that? We understand that ASU, well, pardon, the federal government is putting UTAs to uh, what they call an integrity test. How long, according to the agreement that you have with the federal government, is that supposed to last? Because lives of young people are at stake here? Well, the young people are also our children. They are our wards. As I address you today, I have two undergraduates who are my children in my house, and many of our members also have theirs. 
uh, we feel for our children because uh, we are concerned about their future. What we are doing as a union is to enhance the quality of their certificates. We don't want what happened to us to happen to them. And what do I mean? We went to public primary, we went to public secondary schools. Our children uh, did not go to public primary schools again. If care is not taken, their own children too will not go to public universities. And we must stem the tide. We must stem the tide. Otherwise, they will ask us in the future, when all these things were happening, what did you do as those who had, who had the opportunity to, to intervene? The children of the poor just in this moment. country, they cannot afford the cost of mm. private universities. Yeah. Well, uh, just, just one moment, and Prof. Uh, you know, the, the issues of ASU date back several years, and it is very, very troubling and disconcerting that the issues will continue to revolve the same issues over and over again over the years. I mean, so, as far as some people are concerned, this back into the 90s for all we care. And the issues are pretty much the same. You cited a, a case of something that has started in 2019, you know, when as far as 2013, 2012, and all of that, and we're still talking about the same thing. What is the middle ground? Because, as you know, mm -hmm. that popular saying, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. So if these things yes. continue and the children continue to stay at home, young people whose minds are fertile and creative continue to stay at home redundant, one wonders what could happen. So what is it that ASU would be willing to give up just to return to school so that these children can be, these young people can be gainfully engaged? Yes, Ayo, thank you very much, Ayo. Um, as you are appealing to ASU, you need to appeal to government. We are Talking like with ASU. So victims. please go ahead. Each time, each time people talk about uh, this problem has been there for long, they don't also appreciate the solution we have brought to the system to keep the system going. But for ASU intervention, we will no longer have public universities today. Do we still have public primary schools? Do we still have public secondary schools? That is what will happen to public universities. So each time people say, you have been doing the same thing, they, should need, they need to also acknowledge that but for Ted Fund, Ted Fund was a creation of ASU's uh, advocacy and struggles. So let us acknowledge what ASU has brought to the system, that ASU has kept the system going. Otherwise, public universities will have collapsed totally. Then you spoke about Utah's versus IPPIS. Yes, we are making some progress in that area, but where we have problem, which I must say publicly here, is government's insistence that there is a transition period within which our members will first go to IPPIS. And we told them that is not feasible. There is no transition period per se, if we look at the issue very closely and, uh, and conscientiously, because as we speak now, it will take government another three, four, five months to capture more than three quarters of our members who are not yet on IPPIS. And if government is sincere with us and we work together uh, with that understanding, with the spirit with which we started, we can complete the process of uh, Utah's verification, uh, the integrity test, the last stage as a matter of this. Utah's has been presented at four levels. We started with the Ministry of Education. After the Ministry of Education, we moved on uh, to the Senate. We presented before the Senate leadership. And from there, we moved to the Office of the Ankata General of the Federation, where all stakeholders, including uh, the National Information Technology Development Agency, NIDA, and the Office, uh, uh, office of the uh, Security Advisor, were represented. So we have done this at those three levels, and they, were, they all applauded uh, the innovative uh, invention which Utah represents. The last Thursday, which was the last stage of presentation, we presented Utah to vice chancellors and bosses of federal universities. They also applauded Utah. So we have passed four stages of verification or test. What we just about what we're about to do now is the last stage of integrity test, which is before NIDA. 
And that should not take us more than a few days. So what we need is commitment. There's nothing like transition. What we are saying in essence is that government should just go ahead and pay what government has withheld, the salaries of our members, people who have not been paid for eight, nine months, on account of not registering on IPPIS. Government should stop this and twisting and manipulation, going back to universities to ask them to go and enroll in IPPIS so that uh, they will now migrate to Utah. Professor Ogrimi, we'll see it as just a game of deception. as we wind so down we now, as we wind down now, because we're trying to get a resolution. I mean, I don't think it works for anyone to have ASU go on strike for months. I'm just an academic here. And, you know, looking through the timeline of ASU strike from 2000, you realize we've had at least 10 different strike actions between 2001 and this time. But, you know, you've mentioned some areas. You said that you have done your findings. Government says this dire economic you know, situation, this COVID-19 and all that. But you say you have done your findings and you believe that the government can get that money. So as we wind down, if we could just do this in, in 30 seconds, what are those areas you think governments can pull out the funds from and sort ASU? Well, I told you about uh, the seven person committee that we jointly set up. Everybody knows that some of the ideas that they brought up are now, have now been activated. We now know stamp duty is here with us. It was one of the proposals. We now know uh, even fat has been raised. And uh, there are other sources. So we don't actually need to tell government uh, where to get fund to address its own uh, challenges, especially those they see as topmost priority. So it is not enough for uh, people to continue to blackmail ASU. ASU has been the, the life wire for the system in the last uh, 20 years or so. Otherwise, our public universities uh, will have ceased to exist, just like we cannot showcase our primary and secondary schools in Nigeria today. Mm. Well, Professor Biodo Nguyemi, we'd so like to finally, thank you so much. Finally. Well, uh, if we could just do that in 10 seconds, because we're, we're totally out of time for this segment, please. Yes, yes. Finally, I, I want to appeal to our students and their parents to appreciate what ASU is trying to do. We want to bring our universities to the level that they will be proud of their certificates. Okay, Professor Nguyemi. Public universities in Nigeria, if not... Professor uh, Grimey, I imagine the students also appealing to ASU and the federal and government secondary. to find a common ground. But we'd like to thank you so much for your time. I wish you the very best uh, in these negotiations. We've been speaking with Professor Abiodo Guiemi, the president of ASU, on the program this morning. Well, we'll go on a break, and when we return, we'll talk about something labor-related also. Please stay with us. <laughs>